clients at these email addresses, and you can probably tell right away which one's valid and which one's not. But how do we get a computer to figure that out? Now, I don't know anything about how the human mind works. I do own one, but that doesn't mean I got a user's manual for it. But I do know that I can recognize right away which one of these is, is a valid email address and which is not based on some sort of pattern recognition that's going on in my mind. But how does the computer tell? Well, if we're going to look at this from the point of view of the computer, more than likely we are going to scan across this in order to see if we've got the correct order of characters and types of characters as we encounter them along the way. Before we get into that, though, let's talk about something a lot simpler. In fact, the alphabet, if you go back to the lesson on alphabets, the alphabet that emails are based on is the alphabet that is on our keyboard set, right? Let's take a much easier alphabet. Let's talk about the binary alphabet. Remember, the binary alphabet is just the elements 0 and 1. We can come up with every possible binary value just using those two elements from the binary alphabet. So let's try something. Let's talk about serial communication. Now, serial communication uses just ones and zeros, and it sends them down in a row, in a stream. Now, whenever we talk about receiving data from a device across a single line, so we're going to get one bit at a time, we're going to encounter these bits one bit at a time, you have to have information in these pattern of ones and zeros that tells the receiving device, hey, here's a marker for when this is starting to happen, or here's a marker to indicate this this happening and it helps the receiving device understand and count the bits as they're coming in understand what each portion of the message means the specific type of serial communication we're going to be talking about is Ethernet now you don't really need to know much about Ethernet or even any sort of serial communications to follow along with what we're going to do in this lesson but I want to use this as an example now the Ethernet starts out with two things before you can get to the frame before you get to the information that you're looking for in this message, you have something called a preamble and you have a start of frame delimiter. Now, all this is is a way for the, the receiving devices to kind of get in the rhythm. They know the speed at which the bits are coming, they synchronize, and they're good to go. That's really the primary purpose of the Ethernet preamble. And the way it works is you get this long stream of 1010101s. It just, it just keeps going, okay? Now, how do we know when the preamble and the start of frame delimiter are over? Well, it's pretty easy. The last byte, the start of frame delimiter, is just 10101011. And it's this last one here that tells us, okay, that's the line that's drawn. Everything after that we're going to receive as a frame. All right? Now, Whenever we look at how to interpret this, and by the way, I'm an electrical engineer. I was trained to do things in digital electronics using a lot of diagrams, one of which is referred to as a state diagram. Now, we can represent the receiving devices, devices you know, condition or state or behavior whenever it receives this by drawing a diagram that shows step by step by step how I'm moving from state or condition to condition. Now, a state diagram consists of two pieces. It has these circles which are a state. They're considered states. That indicates or an identifier of our state. Think of it as a stepping stone. If I'm standing on one stone and I see a number of other stones that I could step to, those stones are the state or the condition that I'm in. Now, how do I get to another stone? Well, that's going to be represented with an arrow, which is a transition. So, I may be on one stone, and maybe I can go to that stone if I receive a 1, or I can go to that stone if I receive a 0. And so, the next bit that comes in is a 0, so I know to go to this stone, all right? I know which stone or which step or which state to go to if I receive a particular L value. So, what we can do is, hopefully, give you a really simple state diagram to show you how the computer is processing or the receiving the network interface card is receiving 
reading this preamble and it knows when it's done. All right, so I am going to start out with some sort of an initial state. I'm going to call this state A. I'm going to label it. And basically, the only thing that's going to get me out of this state is a one. So I'm going to receive a one. Now, Yes, I could, and please understand that there's a lot to this, but that I'm not going over. But understand that I could receive a zero, which just means I'm at a different point in this message here. But basically, the only thing that's going to get me out of state A is a one. And so I receive a one, and I'm going to go to state B. I'm going to move from this stone to this stone when I receive a one. All right. Now, the only thing that, and, and by the way, we assume we're not at the end of the message. We're not at the end of the, the start of frame delimiter. Now, we're somewhere in here. So what should come after a one? Well, a zero. And so I go to state C when I receive a zero. All right. So any one of these, a one and then a zero. So we have a one and then a zero. Now, after that, you expect to see a one, right? So one, zero, one. The next one should be a one. And so a one takes me to state D. Now, where do I go from here? Well, if I'm in the middle here, I expect one, zero, one, and then another zero, and then a one, and then a zero, and then a one, and a zero. And so what I could actually do is simply say, as long as I receive a one, then a zero, then a one, then a zero, then a one, then a zero. I'm just simply passing through this message. But what if I receive a one followed by another one? Well, that other one is going to get me to state E, which is going to be right there. It's going to tell me that I've received the start of frame delimiter. We, the next bit that's coming, is part of the information. Now, let me try and explain a little bit more about this diagram. First of all, I need to receive at least one, one, zero. All right. And so that's why the, I mean, you could have said, well, Dave, why didn't you go one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero? Well, because if I had started at state C, and I received a one zero and just kept receiving one zero, that's fine. But I could have also started at state C and received a one one, which might not have indicated that I had received this preamble. It could have been that I just got a couple of ones here up front. Yes, it's, it's a little bit more than that. But what I wanna say is that I wanna receive at least one one zero. I wanna receive at least one one zero. If I started at state C, I could have gone into the one one, I could have gone to state E without receiving any one zeros. So we need to at least get some one zeros out of the way. Now this is a pretty ugly drawing, right? And this is what this drawing is telling me is that, um, like I said, I've got at least one zero. Then I can have as many one zeros as I want after that, or I could have no more one zeros and just simply go one one. Now, what would happen if, if I needed to, say, send you an email describing this process? If I wanted to send you a text message, this drawing really needs to be in the form of a picture, right? So what if I instead wanted to give you an expression, a, a, like, almost like a mathematical expression, to represent this operation? That is where today's lesson comes in, regular expressions. And regular expressions, sometimes abbreviated reg X, all right, is just really a text way of describing how to go through this process, the process of going from state to state to state that a computer does on a regular basis. Now, it's going to be based on our binary alphabet. And it's going to say, first of all, and, and it's a sequence, all right? It's a sequence like we've been talking about in our previous lessons. So I need to make sure that I get at least a one followed by a zero. That one followed by a zero, remember, we're looking at a sequence here. They're concatenated since they're next to each other. I just didn't put the dot there. So these guys are a sequence. Now, after that, I could get zero, an empty string, or more of that one zero sequence. So what I'm gonna do is in parentheses, I'm gonna put one zero, but then I'm gonna put this asterisk here. And if you remember from our previous lesson, the asterisk indicates that I can have any combination of what's inside those parentheses. Now, what's inside the parentheses is a sequence. 
it is a concatenated concatenation of one and zero. So what I can have is either no copies of what's in there, the empty string. I can have one copy, one zero. I can have 20 copies, one zero, one zero. Okay, you get the idea. So basically this one zero right here is the first one. This one zero right here, any number of copies of it are all these one zeros. Now, what does the message need to be followed by? Well, the last two bits must be one, one. All right. And so what I could actually do is say this text string represents this state diagram. A lot simpler to send that as a message, isn't it? In fact, there's a probably an even quicker way to write this. Remember that the asterisk meant I had any combination that could be made from the elements that are inside of this parenthesis. And there's only one element inside that parenthesis. That is the one zero. So I can copy zero times one zero or just have one zero one zero as many times as I want. But I need to have at least one copy. Now, if you remember, there was another notation, the dagger, that allowed me to say, okay, I can have exactly the same type of set as described by the star, except remove the possibility of an empty set. So I could also write this as one zero dagger one one. And that will give me an opportunity to describe that short string describes that full graphic of the state diagram. So let's draw another state diagram and see if we can't come up with the regular expression for it. I'm going to have three states. I'm going to have A, B, and C. And once again, C is going to be my ending state. Now, as long as, and in fact, tell you what, let's make a larger uh, alphabet than just one zero. Let's use, um, how about lowercase letters from the Latin alphabet? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, as long as I get a lowercase a, I am going to stay in this state. What that means is, is that I could, ha I could, I'll start out in state A, and as long as I keep getting A's, I'm going to start out, stay in state A. So. Being in state A means I've got anywhere from zero to a thousand of these A's all in a row. So as long as I keep receiving A's, I'm going to stay in state A. A B, however, will send me to B, to state B. And in fact, as long as I keep receiving B's, I'm gonna stay in state B. What gives me from B to C? A single C, all right? Now, how am I going to describe this using my newfound tool called regular expressions? Well, one of the things that I can do is just simply say a star is going to represent the, the, the path, the, what gets me going through this uh, state diagram. So I can receive zero or a hundred A's or one A or five A's and I'm gonna stay here. What moves me to state B is a B. So I need to have at least one B to get from here to, from A to B. Now I use the star because remember, I don't need to, I start out in state capital A, so I don't need to have an A to stay there, but as long as I'm getting A's, I'm staying here. What moves me to B is at least one B. Now, as long as I keep getting B's, I stay in state B. But remember, I have to have at least one B. So I can either do B, B star, which is going to say I receive a B, and then I can have any number of Bs after that, including the empty string, or I can use my dagger, and that'll make me stay in state. That will make it so that I've got it, will have at least one B. Now, what gets me to state C is a single C. So there's my regular expression. Now, the question is, is for this regular expression, we want to know what satisfies this regular expression, all right? That's my question. Well, there are a number of things that satisfy it. For example, I can get A, B, C, right? Just A, one A, at least one B, and a C, that will get me from here to here. What else will satisfy it? Well, in fact, I don't even need an A, I could just have BC. BC will also satisfy it. Um, heck, 
A, 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 B, 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 C. That'll satisfy it, right? So, what won't satisfy it? Well, let's think about what won't satisfy it. What won't satisfy it is, how about um, A, B, A, C? That won't satisfy it. Um, or A, C? That won't satisfy it or B, A, C, those won't satisfy it because you're thinking about, and remember, this is from the point of view of the computer. As the computer is passing through the string, it's looking and making sure that it is following along with the rules defined by that regular expression. Now, what if there are options? So, for example, let's try one more state diagram. We'll have A, B, and so we'll just say an A takes us from A to B, um, and then we have two options. I could have either a B input or a C input, and that will take me to one of these two states. And so both of these are legitimate. I could be going across my stepping stones, I could go from A to B, and then depending on the next character I receive, I could either go to state C or go to state D. Sorry about using all these letters, maybe I should have mixed them up with some numbers, but basically what we're looking at is A will take us to the next state, a B will take us to state capital C, a C, a lowercase c, will take us to uh, next state capital D. Whew, that was ugly. And then we'll just say that a D will take us to our final state. All right. Now, how do we do this? Now, I've already talked about, in fact, there's no loops here, so, you know, so it's not really, a, a, we are not going to have an asterisk or a star here, but the process goes like this. I could do A, B, D. That will get me to my final state. Or I could do A, C, D. That will get me to my final state. So it looks like right here in the middle, I have some sort of an option, right? Everything before that option, consistent, just an A. Everything after that option, consistent, just a D. So how do I determine which one of these, uh, you know, how do I tell the computer you can expect for the second one either this or this? Well, it turns out that we do have a way to represent that. We have A, and then in parentheses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say B, and then use this little V, C. And the little v, that really represents an or. So I'm saying that I'm going to concatenate a with either b or c, whatever's, in, whatever's inside, whatever the result is after evaluating inside of that parentheses. And then I have to have a d. And there is my regular expression that represents that state diagram. Once again, a lot simpler, a lot more straightforward. Let's start out with just kind of a definition here. A regular expression, once again, abbreviated reg X, on a set A defines a subset of A star. Remember that A star starts out with the empty set and then it creates every possible string you can ever come up with out of the elements of A. But what the regular expression on the set A does is it says, okay, out of this, we're going to take the ones that we accept. For example, using the set of keys that are on a keyboard of a computer, you can create all sorts of things that you can claim are an email, but the regular expression that defines an email says, nope, subset is this. These are the things that make a valid email. Um, and so this subset is called a regular set. All right. Now we're going to get a little bit mathematical here showing that, um, well, we're covering all of our bases in order to create these regular expressions. First of all, lambda, which remember is the empty set. This is a regular expression on A, or a regular expression of A. So you can say that just, just lambda by itself defines a regular expression. Now, 
Uh, now, we're gonna, now we're gonna start creating regular expressions based on the elements that are in the set. Because remember, A, uh, or excuse me, A, the set A contains elements. Well, the empty set is basically a subset of every set. So it is really an element, can be kind of considered a, uh, an element of A. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if X is an element of A, then X by itself is a reg X, a regular expression of A. Now we did this already, right? I said that, for example, if I just had the state diagram and I went from one state to another and the only thing that took me from the first state to the final state is just the letter A, since A would be inside of this set, that would be a regular expression by itself. So we're kind of building up from the ground up. We're just simply saying any element that's in X, that itself can be considered a regular expression. Now, if A and B are reg X of A, then the concatenation A B is also a regular expression of A. So, X. This rule right here, if X is an element of, the, of A, then just X in itself is a regular expression to get me from the start to the finish, right? But what the second one is saying is that if A and B are both regular expressions. So if I have a regular expression that gets me from here to here, and then I have a regular expression that gets me from here to here, then the concatenation of the two gets me from the very, very beginning to the very, very end. Now, don't have enough room here for any more rules, so let's erase, let's make some room and put a couple more rules up. Okay, if A and B are regular expressions of A, then A or B is a regular expression of A. And we've already shown that, right? And so what we've got is that if the, and there's, we could do this a couple of ways. I could just simply say, to get from the start to the finish, I could have either A or B, all right? Either one of those will get me from the start to the finish. This regular expression right here defines this sort of situation. If A is a regular expression of A, then A star is a reg X of A. And a dagger is a reg X of A. Now, this is not to be considered a full list of all the, of all the possible ways we can create regular expressions, but what it does represent is a good foothold to get us started to creating these regular expressions using alphabets to figure out certain patterns of things that we're looking for in text strings or in any string. Now, we have barely scratched the surface here. You know, there are so many things, so many aspects to this very powerful tool. There are some things that can be confusing though. For example, when you go to different programming languages or in different platforms and so forth, the way regular expressions are represented can differ. For example, it may be that instead of parentheses, you use square brackets, or it may be that instead of being able to re represent just a single element of an expression, you're actually going to represent a range. All those things are where are things that you're going to be capable of doing whenever you start expanding into other pro into other platforms and so forth. But once you get a good hold of how regular expressions work, you'll be able to validate user input coming from a web site, you know, things like email addresses that are being submitted on a form. You can search text files for strings like part numbers and so forth. You can represent complex strings with a single re uh, regular expression. Beware, however, there will be different syntaxes used on different platforms.